Our objectives in this lesson are the following. Represent a quadratic function using table of values, graph, and equation. And also, I am going to teach you how to deduce information from equations. Let's have a quick review of our previous lesson. Write fact if the given represents a quadratic function and bluff if not a quadratic function. Number one here is a fact. Why? We have the name of the function, an equal sign, and the exponent of our variable is 2. Next one, we have a name of a function, an equal sign, and when we multiply x by x, it will give us x squared. So this is also a fact. Number 3, we have a name of a function, an equal sign, but the highest exponent of our variable is 4, not 2. So this is not a quadratic function. Number 4, we have y, an equal sign, and when we multiply x by x here, it will give us x squared. Therefore, this is a fact. Last one, we have a y, an equal sign, but the exponent of our x here is 1. This is not a quadratic function. This is just a linear function. How would you know if a table of values is a quadratic function? First thing, you have to examine the increment of the x values. There should be a constant increment. From negative 3 to negative 2 is 1 unit. From negative 2 to negative 1 is also 1 unit. Same thing with negative 1 to 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and 2 to 3. So the increment of our x values are all the same. The next thing that you have to do is to determine the first differences of y values. We're going to start here. 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. 2 minus 1 is also 1. 1 minus 0 is also 1. 0 minus negative 1. Negative negative will become plus, so we have 1. Negative 1 minus negative 2. This will become plus, so negative 1 plus 2 is also 1. Negative 2 minus negative 3. This will become plus. Negative 2 plus 3 is also 1. Notice that the first differences of y values are all the same. So it means their increments are all equal. This means this table of values represent not a quadratic function, but a linear function. To check, the equation of this table of values is y equals x. The exponent of x here is 1, so this is indeed a linear function. Let's have another one. Again, let us examine first the increment of our x values, and we can see that they all have the same increment of 1. So we're going to determine now the first differences of y values. Let's start here. 9 minus 4 is equal to 5. 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. 1 minus 0 is equal to 1. 0 minus 1 is equal to negative 1. 1 minus 4 is equal to negative 3. 4 minus 9 is equal to negative 5. Notice that the first differences of our y values are not equal. They are different from one another. So now we are going to get the second differences of y values. Again, let us start here. 5 minus 3 will give us 2. 3 minus 1 is also 2. 1 minus negative 1, this will become plus, so this is 2. Negative 1 minus negative 3, this will become plus, so negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Negative 3 minus negative 5, this will become plus, so negative 3 plus 5 is also 2. Notice that this time, the second differences of y values are all the same, meaning their increment are all equal. This means this table of values represent a quadratic function. Let us check. The equation of this table of values is actually y equals x squared. And yes, the exponent of our x is 2, so this is indeed a quadratic function.
try this. Determine whether the relation is linear, quadratic, or neither. Let us first examine the increment of our x values. From 2 to 4 is 2 units, 4 to 6 is also 2 units, 6 to 8 is 2 units, as well as 8 to 10 and 10 to 12. So let us now determine the first differences of y values. Let us start here. 60 minus 42 will give us 18. 42 minus 27 will give us 15. 27 minus 15 will give us 12. 15 minus 6 will give us 9. And 6 minus 0 will give us 6. The first differences of y values are not equal. They are different from one another. So let us determine the second differences of y values. Again, let us start here. 18 minus 15 will give us 3. 15 minus 12 is also 3. 12 minus 9 is also 3. And 9 minus 6 is also 3. Notice that the second differences of y values are all equal to 3. Therefore, this table of values represents a quadratic function. Now let us talk about the graph. From our previous lesson, you have learned that the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. And if our a is greater than 0, the parabola opens upward. If the a is less than 0, the parabola opens downward. I will teach you how to determine key features from an equation. I have here three equations. The first one is in general form. This one is in factored form. And this one is in vertex form. From the general form, we can determine the y-intercept of our parabola. And it is the constant here. So this means the y-intercept of this equation is at 0, negative 15. And also, since our x here is positive, this parabola opens upward and hence it has a minimum point. The factored form can give us the roots of our parabola. All we have to do is to solve for the values of our x's here. x minus 3 equals 0, so x is equal to 3 x plus 5 equals 0, so x equals negative 5. Therefore, the roots of this equation are 3, 0 and negative 5, 0. Again, since this is positive, the parabola opens upward and it has a minimum. The vertex form, on the other hand, will give us the vertex of our parabola. And that is h and k of our equation. The vertex is also the turning point of our parabola. So the turning point of this equation is the vertex, and the vertex is the negative h, so negative 1, and the k, which is negative 16. Again, our parabola is positive, so the parabola opens upward and it has a minimum. What I did next is that I graph these three equations. And it turned out it gave me the same graph. Why? Because these three equations pertains to only one quadratic function. It is only expressed in different forms. Now let us see if our conclusions coincides with our graph. The y-intercept is at 0, negative 15. Here is 0. Negative 15 is here, so this is the point 0, negative 15. And yes, it is our y-intercept. The parabola opens upward and it has a minimum point. Now, for the roots, we have 3, 0 and negative 5, 0. The roots are the points that crosses the x-axis. And we have here the point 3, 0, and this one is negative 5, 0. These are our roots. And the turning point, again, is the same as our vertex. And it is at negative 1, negative 16. This is our vertex, which is also the turning point of our parabola. Why? Because this one is going down, and then after here, it goes up. So this is the turning point. 
Let us do extra challenge. Match the equation to its graph. Notice that in our four parabolas here, only one opens downward. So this means the equation of this parabola has a negative a. And the only equation that has a negative a here is this one. So this is the equation of this parabola. Next one, from here again, we can get the y-intercept. It is at 0, 8. The y-intercept is the point that crosses the y-axis. This is the y-axis, but this point is at negative y. We are looking for a positive y. We cannot see the y-intercept from this graph, and we only have this one. This is probably 8. So 0, 8. This is the y-intercept. So the equation of this parabola is this one. Now, here is a factored form, and from here, we can get the roots. Again, the roots are the points that crosses the x-axis. Here is our x-axis. This is one root, and probably this is 4, 0. While this one is another root, which is negative 5, 0. So the equation of this parabola is this one. And this leads us to the last equation. So this is the equation of this parabola. To check, from here, we can determine our vertex. And that would be the value of h and k. That is positive 8, positive 4. This is positive 8, and this is positive 4. So this is probably the vertex. So our equation is correct. For the summary, here are the things that we discussed in this lesson. Take time to understand this. Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. What is the y-intercept of this equation? We can get it from the constant, so the y-intercept is at 0, 10. Number 2, what are the roots? So we have 2, 0 and negative 6, 0. Next one, what is the vertex? We have negative 3 and negative 4. Next one, the graph of a quadratic function is called parabola. Last one, true or false, to determine if a table of values is a quadratic function, the first differences in y must be equal. This is false. It must be the second differences in y. Gets? Our next lesson is converting quadratic function in general form to vertex form and vice versa.